Hey, it's Chris from Maynard Dog Training Solutions. I'm going to do one more for this morning. Hopefully, I'll get some, some more uh, later on this afternoon. But um, Diane Dorsey from the uh, Warwick, Warwick, Rhode Island area, um, is having some potty training issues. And this is something very, very common in younger dogs, of course. And then, of course, any age dogs. Um, so the first thing I want to say is let's make sure we rule out any possibility of medical issues. Make sure your dog has a vet exam. Make sure there's nothing going on inside the body of the dog, as well as any kind of uh, urinary tract infections or anything else that might be going on. So you want to make sure those are ruled out and that's not the cause, a physical cause. So <clears throat> here's how I start it. The first thing I do, and there's a lot of steps to this. There's a lot of parts to this. The only way you're going to do get this completed properly is if you do all of them. You have to do all of them. Otherwise, you're going to lose out on one part or another, and you're still going to have potty issues. So when you say, I tried this, you didn't try it long enough. That's what I always tell people. You didn't try it long enough. So this is what you want to start with. Meal times. You know the dog is probably going to have to go out to the bathroom at mealtime or right after mealtime. So the first thing I do is I mix the water with the food, and I put a little extra. So I make it really muddy and soupy. The dog will keep eating and eating. They'll keep drinking the water in order to eat. So they'll finish that bowl and they're probably gonna have enough in their stomach to have to push out whatever's already in there. So you're gonna put your dog on leash. You're gonna walk your dog outside on leash. The dog does not get to play. It does not get to sniff around. You're just gonna manually move your dog around until it's time to go to the bathroom. If you have to use a longer leash, that's fine. But you're gonna bring your dog out and the only thing they get to do at this moment is go to the bathroom. Usually dogs will urinate first before they defecate. Soon as your dog goes pee, you're going to reward your dog. So bring some treats out, high value treats. And what that's going to do is go, oh, if I go out here, then I get a reward for it. So that's what you want. Then after the defecation, after the poop, you want to make sure you reward after that as well. So individually rewarding pee and poop. On leash, bring them out there. So that's going to start building up something in their head that goes, I would rather put it outside, wait and put it outside to get the reward than put it inside. Now, on that note, going inside, no reprimands. If, you, if your dog peed or pooped on the floor, whatever it may be, it, you're already too late. They already got their reward. They got it out of them, right? So if you're reprimanding them, if you're putting their nose in it, all that other kind of stuff that's so old-fashioned, no science behind that whatsoever, it's not going to work. Dog has no idea what you're doing right now except physically manhandling them and making them do something at this moment so they think they're getting punished for something they're doing right now this second, which might just be standing there or being pet by you and that sort of stuff. So no reprimands. What you want to do is, if it's many spots in the house, if it's more than one room, you want to actually cut down access to all the rooms in the house to make it just one room. I use a bathroom or I use a kitchen. Kitchen is usually a little bit easier to monitor the dog and allow the dog to see what you're doing in the house. And the reason why I use either of those, usually we have tile floor or some sort of linoleum in those two, in those two rooms. A little easier to clean up when it happens. So we want to make that uh, an easier thing. Baby gates, um, putting plywood up. People have done all kinds of crazy stuff in order to do it. They make all kinds of um, child gates that you can use, some dog gates that you can use to really monitor them. Um, if you have an open floor plan, get one of those uh, those carousel style, the circular ones. It's a humongous baby uh, play area thing, whatever you want to call it. But they make them for dogs as well. So that'll help you keep the dog in one room. Because what you want to do is be able to control it in one room first and then open access to the other room so that the dog's just not wildly running around the house peeing and pooping all over the house. So <clears throat> don't reprimand. I like to use pads, but not the disposable. I don't really don't like the disposable because a lot of times if you have a younger dog, they just chew them up and tear them up, and then you're just going through them like crazy. There's some um, pads you can order on um, things like Amazon. It's like a hospital, uh, hospital bed pad. It's soft on the top, plastic on the bottom, so nothing can seep through. And what I do is I put those in the places where the dog actually goes. So let's say we have the dog confined to the kitchen, and there's three spots in the kitchen that the dog is always going in. We're going to put those pads in those three spots. I'm going to remove the poop always because it stinks. If I can take it leaving the pee there, I'm going to leave the pee because what I want the dog to do is return back to that pad. I want that to happen. I want it on the pad. So then what happens is I still have these three spots, but now it's on the pad. And I'm going to go back to um, some dogs will miss the pad, and it's not intentional. I'll go back to that in a second. 
Once you get your dog going onto those pads, what you're going to do is you're going to start moving, let's say it's one here, one over here, one over here in the kitchen. You're going to start moving each one of those closer and closer together until we have just one pad. And you can have it just at one of the spots that's already designated. That's okay. You can move the other two towards it, towards it, towards it until it's just one pad the dog is directing the pee and poop onto. Then we take that pad and then each day we're going to move it inches, not feet, not yards, not room by room, inches. Shift it over a little bit each day, each day, each day. And you're shifting it towards the exit door that the dog would normally go out to use the bathroom. That's important because, one, if we're shifting it too far, the dog is just going to go back to the original spot where they started or where the pad was recently. The other thing is you want it towards the door that the dog would normally use to go outside. Not the front door if the dog never goes out there except to go on a walk. It's not going to help us any. We want it towards that. Usually it's the back door or the side door, the one that leads out to the yard. And also, if we catch the dog going on these pads... Get a reward real quick and, and get that dog rewarded. Or if you have one already, get that dog rewarded. Because again, you want them on that pad. And then eventually, once you reach it to the door that's uh, exit door, each eventually you'll be outside with it. So you can actually bring it outside and have the dog targeted outside. And then when it's outside, you can actually make it smaller. Shrink it down, cut it up, fold it up, so that the target becomes smaller and smaller. And each time the dog gets this smaller and smaller piece, eventually it's just outside because you're building up every time you went outside anyway, so that's going to help out a lot. Um, that is, I believe that's everything. Yeah, I got them all. I actually remembered all of them. So back on the note of missing pads. Some people are like, oh, my dog just does it to tick me off. They'll walk right up and they know the pad's there and they pee all over the floor. Well, here's what happens. Dog smells the area. There's pee in the area. They're going to pee and poop wherever they're at right now. It's not on the pad. Sure, we want them to get on the pad, but we have to understand that dogs, are, they don't realize right and wrong. It's all about survival. How do I get rid of this? This is where I normally put it. That's where I'm going to put it. So I hope that helps. Um, I'll be reaching out to you, and uh, thanks for your question. This is a very common thing in dogs of all ages, and uh, this is probably one of the number one reasons that I get called out to, uh, to do in-home uh, training sessions. And so if anybody needs a hand uh, at any time, give me a shout. Um, again, I'm Chris with Maynard Dog Training Solutions, and that's how you potty train. See you later.